Welcome everyone to this week's New Money. I'm Tracy Chang. Feeling bugged down by house chores? Well, you aren't alone. Who has time for things such as doing the laundry given our busy schedule anyways? But the good news is that with the internet and online to offline offerings, you will never have to worry about doing those chores again. Like many other young people, Xie Guosheng has a problem that haunts his busy everyday life, laundry. He often has to work overtime at the media company he runs in Beijing, and by the end of the week, his apartment floor is covered with dirty clothes. I can use the washing machine for smaller clothes in summer, but when it piles up, it takes a lot of time to clean all of it, especially in winter if my down jackets or coats get dirty. I have to go to a dry cleaner. But life has been much easier for him since he found out about Jingxi, an O2O on-demand washing service. I saw an advertising event for their company, and I thought that a company that can help working people like me clean our clothes would be a great help. So I subscribed to their public account. With the help of this online service, the tedious chore of cleaning clothes for an upcoming work trip to Guangzhou in South China is now very easy. Xie Guosheng simply places an order through WeChat. One of the washing company's delivery boys then comes to pick up his dirty clothes. I pick up laundry from around 8 a.m. to around 10 p.m. I pick up around 30 orders every day. Li Xianhui moved to Beijing from northeast China less than two years ago. He knows the capital like the back of his own hand after working there as a food delivery boy. Li Xianhui became a delivery boy for Jingxi half a year ago. He finds the work hard, but rewarding. It gets busier as the weather gets colder. I like this job a lot. If the company keeps developing, we'll make more money as well. I'd be thrilled to keep working in this company for a long time. Entrepreneurs have transformed this household burden into a big business. Liang Guigang is not yet in his 30s. He launched Jingxi in October 2014 to take part in the small revolution. I chose O2O laundry mainly because I recognized a problem in the traditional industry. Firstly, it's inconvenient to the consumer, and it's usually also rather expensive. Dry cleaners also have a high profit margin. So I realized that the biggest advantage of an online laundry service would be that it's convenient to the consumer. For instance, they won't have to drive around to look for a dry cleaner or figure out when it's open. Online dry cleaners should be able to provide service 24 hours every day. Once you have this, the consumers will begin to adapt and change their laundry habits. By August 2015, Jingxi's service has been online for less than a year, yet it has almost 50,000 users placing around 300 orders every day. Although the company is still small in the O2O laundry business, the current business environment seems to carry a promise of continued growth. And folks, just a reminder, you can use your smartphone to scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen to find the latest and all previous episodes of New Money. And to begin today's discussion, Professor Jia Ning joins me in the studio, and she is the Deputy Director at the China Business Case Center at Tsinghua University. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Professor Jia. Thanks, so Tracy. let me ask you this question. The old to old business model seems to be penetrating all areas of um, basically the services sector, but what are some of the best areas for this business to go in? Right. 
right. Well, you're absolutely right, Tracy. I think O2 has become a hot buzzword, you know, mm -hmm. in the Chinese market, uh, especially in the last several years. Uh, and if you look at the Internet Plus strategy, right, that aims to integrate uh, Internet with traditional sectors, right. the Internet, especially Internet companies, are basically mm -hmm. penetrating and revamping all traditional sectors, including the service area. Right. And the laundry business that we're talking about today is mm -hmm. actually a subsector. Right, right. In that sense. And um, there are many different kinds of O2O service out there. Mm -hmm. And I think we can classify them using a two dimensional matrix. Mm -hmm. So, what we're looking at here is a classification of all different kinds of O2O services. Mm -hmm. um, and the X axis uh, is actually frequency, and right. the Y axis here is price. Right? Right. So, the first wave of O2O service in China pretty much all started with high frequency but low, low price, price service. Right. And this mm -hmm. is because uh, if the service is of high frequency, then you can easily accumulate a large user base quickly right. right, and establish that scale effect. But now what we're seeing is um, the O2 service has gradually moved up towards mm. the upper left quarter, which is a uh, higher price but lower frequency. Mm. So we're looking at you know, healthcare, for example. That's a classic right. example of uh, low frequency but high price right. uh, service. Mm -hmm. right? So there are different, many different kinds of O2O uh, services out there. I see. And this laundry service fits somewhere probably right in the middle. You're exactly mm -hmm. right, Trace. It's right in the middle. So I think laundry service is one of those services that has a sort of medium price but medium frequency. I see. Right. So Professor Jia, what kind of problems does this laundry O2O business actually solve? Well, um, I if you look at the traditional you know, offline uh, laundry service, mm -hmm. I think it has a number of issues. So the first one is actually pick, a drop off and pick up mm -hmm. in the sense that you have to basically go to the laundry <laughs> service and drop off the items and right. sometimes you have to pick them up yourself, mm -hmm. right? So this is considered a pain point, so to speak, right? right? Uh, from user perspective. And a second challenge is a limited after hour service, right? Mm -hmm. These traditional offline uh, laundry you know, dry cleaners, they usually close after 8 p.m. Right. Uh, uh, and those people who work late, you know, it's just not convenient for them to, you know, pick up their laundries that late. <laughs> and these people are typically young people, right? And they're actually the main users of dry <laughs> cleaning service. service. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. And the related pain point, actually, the third one is a prepaid membership. And this I is see. speaking from personal experience. Mm -hmm. That is, when you sign up uh, for a dry cleaning service, usually you're asked to buy a membership card, right? Mm -hmm. You basically put 300 RMB into it. But my personal experience has been that uh, before I use up all the money in the card, the laundry service has somehow has already gone out of business oh. and there's no way you can get the money back right, right? and this is actually another so-called pain point uh, right. from a user experience so I think O2 service uh, laundry service is able to at least change and resolve some of these uh, issues I see okay. so professor Jia, this business has very low barrier to entry right. so how do these companies fight over market share you know, that's a great question, Tracy. Mm -hmm. I think currently uh, the players in the market are basically using the venture capital money uh, mm -hmm. to aggressively subsidizing users uh, as a way to acquire users and also cultivate new user habit. Mm -hmm. But we know that continue to subsidize users is not a sustainable model or right. approach in the long run, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, once the subsidy stops, well, what is your a core competitive advantage that will allow you to continue to attract and retain existing users, right. right? And when it comes to service sector, I think at the end of the day, it's the service quality and the convenience level uh, that's the most important. That's right. right. So they really have to think about ways to keep these users, right? That's right. And enhance leaving. their service quality, I that's think. Right. Well, folks, low barrier to entry means intense competition. We'll take a look at O2O Laundry's competitors when we return.